This is the uh, this is the circuit we had before, right? Did I get all the numbers right? Yeah. I think that's right. Okay. So basically, the uh, the game we were playing um, on Wednesday was we were examining why the the uh, voltage divider equation worked on half of the circuit but not the other half. You remember that? Yeah. So just to remind you, in case you slept through uh, Wednesday's lecture or something, which is excusable, that's fine. Um, remember we said 2 plus 2 in parallel is 4. Let's see, 4 parallel 4 is 2. So this we said was going to be, uh, let's see, 2 thirds, uh, 1 third of this, which is um, 1 third of that, which is we said this was 4 volts and this was 2 volts. Is that how we played it? OK. So we talked about it. And we said, look, the voltage divider equation appears to work on this right half side of the circuit, right? Because I've got a supply voltage of 4. The divider is 2 over 2 plus 2. So the divider is a half. Half of 4 is 2. Cha-ching. That part works fine. OK. So on this side, though, we said it doesn't work. Because look, I've got a, four, I've got a 12 here. I've got a source voltage of 12. I've got a divider of 4 over 4. Uh, Did you find any bag here? Someone I didn't find any bag, no. Someone, it was yeah, here. Someone yeah, someone picked it up. He was going to take some He was something. Um, <laughs> anything else? <laughs> um, OK. So. Um, the other day in the middle of signals, some kid walked in, some freshman, and he's just like wandered up the aisle and he's staring at me. I'm like, can I help you? He's like, I'm, I'm trying to transfer into this class and I need your signature. And I'm like, you think now's a good time? We'll talk later. And then he turns out it wasn't even the right class. He's trying to get into intro. Uh, I'm like, I don't teach intro. OK. Anyway. So then we said, all right, voltage divider doesn't appear to work here because the source voltage is 12. The divider is 4 over 8, which is a half. Half of 12 is 6, not 4. So we were having this philosophical debate, right? Why does voltage divider work on the right half and not the left? And we came up with a pretty good reason, right? The reason we came up with was that um, over here, so sort of the voltage divider works as long as all the current that goes through the first resistor all goes into the second resistor. OK? And as long as that works, you can count on voltage divider. So that's what's happening on the right-hand side. However, on the left-hand side, it doesn't work that way. Because the current that goes through the 4-ohm resistor doesn't all go through this 4-ohm resistor, right? Some of it does, but some of it goes through off to the other branch. And that's why voltage divider doesn't, doesn't work in that case. OK, so maybe we care, maybe we don't care. I'm not saying that's inherently a bad thing. I don't want you to think that it's bad if current gets drawn off. But what I do want you to just be mindful of is that you can't just eyeball this circuit and be like, yeah, 12, 4, 4, half, that's got to be 6. Right? It doesn't work that way. You can't use that voltage divider equation because you've got to have the knowledge to think, yeah, well, that's not a voltage divider. OK, so we ended class on, on Wednesday by saying, hey, just for kicks, suppose I wanted to make a voltage divider equation. Could I, do, could, I, could I make this right left half side obey the voltage divider equation and still have the right hand side? And I claim, yes, we can. All right. So uh, here's what I came up with. I said, let's make a buffer with an op amp. OK, so to remind you, here's what we did. I drew myself an op amp, and remember, Provided it's in a negative feedback configuration, op amp follows two rules. Rule number one, no current ever flows into either of the inputs. Right? That's actually always true, even if it's not in a negative uh, feedback configuration. So that rule is always true. The other rule is, if it's in a negative feedback configuration, the two input voltage terminals will have the same voltage. It'll be a virtual short between them. So actually, that's not, no, no, no. I don't want to say virtual short. That implies all sorts of things that it shouldn't. They just have the same voltage, OK? So in our case, I said, let's build this circuit. So I'll call this V in. So what's going to be the relationship between these two nodes? Because it's a negative feedback configuration. 
Got to be the same voltage, right? Any op amp where you have a negative feedback configuration, these nodes will always have the same voltage. OK, great. So if this is V in, what's that voltage going to be? V in. And look, it's connected by a wire to this node, V in. So V out equals V in. It's a buffer, right? The output equals the input voltage. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to take this wire, and I'm going to, I'm going to insert my little buffer here. Now, what changes? Yes. Should be the same. So what number should I write here? Is that going to still be 4 volts? Six? Eight? Thirteen? I just made up thirteen. Could it be thirteen volts? Voltage at where? Right here, the where I pointed the first time, right there. What's that voltage gonna be? It's it's same the same voltage as before. So I put that op amp in and nothing changed? Okay, let's analyze. So I got a whole bunch of electrons. They come around the bend, they reach this intersection. Where are those electrons going? Are they near, are some of them going to go down the 4 ohm resistor? Yes, there's definitely some there's going to be some of this action. What about to the right? Is any current going to go to the right? No. No, why? Op amp, right? That's the whole freaking point of the op amp is no current flows into the op amp. Okay? It's got an infinite input impedance. Okay? Electrons get to this corner, right? And they just see nothing. Right? It's just there's no going there. Okay, there's a giant FET transistor in there. They're looking at the gate of that transistor and there's nowhere for them to go. Okay? So does any current flow to the right? None whatsoever. Okay. So if no current flows to the right, uh, all the current that goes through this 4 ohm resistor must go through that 4 ohm resistor. So do I now have can I now apply the voltage divider calculation? Absolutely. OK, as long as I got a condition where all my current travels through, I got a voltage divider. So it's 12, sees a divider of 4 divided by 8. 4 divided by 8 is a half. Half times 12, 6 volts. So I put my buffer in, and that 4 became a 6. All right. OK. Now, what happens on the right-hand half of the circuit? Not you. No, no. Current Is there any current flowing through the right side of the circuit? No voltage. No current? No current, no voltage. So you would feel perfectly comfortable sticking your tongue, let's say, between this node and this node? Yes. I'm going to try that in lab. <laughs> No current? What's that op amp doing? Yeah, op amps don't take current in, but they certainly generate current, right? I mean, don't forget, we connected it. I mean, the op amp's connected to a power supply. It's doing something, right? So, yes, current comes out of the op amp. How much current comes out of the op amp? Whatever it needs to supply. That's the beauty of an op amp. It's just like a power supply. That op amp. To the extent that it is physically, you know, I mean, it's got guts, right? It's got transistors inside of it. To the extent that those transistors can do it, they will supply whatever current it needs to keep the circuit operating at the design point that you set it for. So in principle, provided this op amp can do it, if this is 6 volts, what should this voltage be? 6, six, volts. six volts. Grand. OK. Now, does anybody still want to tell me there's no current flowing through those resistors? I mean, if I've got 6 volts here, and I got a bunch of resistors, there's going to be current unless we violate Ohm's law. Do you want to violate Ohm's law? No. Ohm would be very sad. OK. How much current is coming out of that op amp? 
6 over 6 over 2? 6 over 4, right? The total impedance seen by that source. So the total current is going to be I equals V over R, which is 6 over 2 plus 2, which is 6 over 4, 1 and a half amps. So there is current coming out of that off amp. I'm glad we had that conversation. Sweet. Um, OK, so if this is 6 volts, what's this voltage going to be? 3, according to voltage divider. Or if I didn't want to do that, I could just say 1 and a half amps. That means there's a uh, 3 volt drop across this resistor. 3 volts drop down from 6 volts is 3 volts. Either way, it works out. OK, but the point is that. I mean, I don't know that this isn't necessarily a very practical circuit, but I'm just doing it to illustrate a point, OK? And trying to get some of these concepts back into play. Uh, the point in this case is that uh, now, I, now I've set it up so that voltage divider applies on both sides. OK, I've got, you know, as long as I've, I've, I've obeyed the rules of that, I can use that equation. And then uh, the buffer kind of did a really neat thing. It kept the voltage the same, but it provided a very important service which is it essentially decoupled the two sides of the circuit. Okay? So it let the voltage travel through, but not the impedance. Okay? So basically, those electrons that arrived at this intersection, instead of seeing the combined impedance of, this, of, the, of the bottom node and the right node, now they just see the impedance of the bottom node. So it eventually, it basically like, it changed the impedance that's seen at that node, but it didn't change the voltage at that node, which is a really cool trick. Yes? If you short out this 4 ohm resistor, you tell me. If I keep the op amp there and I short out that 4 ohm resistor. You can see the 4 ohms before it. Uh, it's just that, it? uh, I was just looking at potential differences. So. OK. But let's, let's try it. OK, if you short this out, so what's this voltage? Zero. zero. What's this voltage? Six. No. Zero. If this is 0 and you wired it to, if you short circuit these together, by definition, things that are short circuit are the same voltage. So if this is zero, that's zero, and then this is zero, and so this is it. That's it. Right, right side done. Left side, you'll still pull current through that resistor, though, according to Ohm's law. But you said our bumps supply current, so the circuit would be still. No, well, it supplies as much current as it needs. But if I were to short this, mm -hmm. this voltage would be zero. The op amp would ensure that that voltage is zero. And how much current does it need to supply to ensure that that voltage is zero? Zero. zero. Right. If it put any current through there, if it supplied even one milliamp of current, then that, that milliamp of current would give you an IR drop over those resistors, and then you'd have some voltage here. OK, but that can't be. right? It has to be zero. So the op amp will supply whatever it can in order to maintain the conditions that, that, that you're trying to set up. If it's zero, it's zero. It supplies no current. That's OK. It's variable supply of current. Right? Yeah, absolutely. It's a variable supply of current. Op amps have limitations in terms of how quickly they can supply the current. Right? It can't turn on its supply of current infinitely quickly. Um, it can't, it's got a limit of how much current it can supply. It's got a limit of, limit of what kind of voltage it can supply. Um, that's why you've got to read the specs of your op, op amps. Like you've got to go read the spec sheet and say, like, what's the maximum output voltage? What's the slew rate? What's the... Um, I mean, there's all the gain bandwidth product. There's all these properties of op amps you've got to read about. But at the end of the day, uh, you know, in, if you're working with, in an ideal case, that's basically how it works. I mean, all this stuff is subject to, like, real life limitations. None of this stuff is magic. Yeah, none of it's magic. What do you think? Yes? It really depends on the op amp. I mean, one and a half amps is a lot of current, realistically. I mean, you're not going to take a 741 out of the box and, and expect it to, to, to source one and a half amps. Um, but I'm pretty sure you could buy an op amp that could do it. Um, but yeah, you're right. Realistically, when you deal with that much current, you, 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 you use a different um, tactic, like, like a transistor or a relay or something. Um, but you know, this is just sort of for, for demonstration purposes. OK, so we kind of have two avenues we need to explore now. Let's take a vote. Uh, we can either follow the, um, the op amp conversation to its conclusion, 
or we can follow the, we can start the capacitor conversation. So show of hands for op amps. Oh, pretty strong. Capacitors? <laughs> All right. Well, well, I think we can finish today doing op amps. Um, actually, and, and you know what? Because, because I'm nasty, um, we can actually do both at the same time. We can put op amps in with the, with the, with the capacitors and see what happens. OK. So did you learn about inverting op amps and non-inverting op amps? Did you really? This is so cool. OK. Um, you've been well trained then. So uh, if I were to draw this circuit for you, everybody knows what that does? We don't need to do that because you all studied non-inverting op amps. Cool. We're done. Awesome. Um, no? Wait, what? <laughs> oh, OK, yeah. We can talk about that. OK. Non-inverting op amp. Why is it non-inverting? Well, it'll become apparent in a minute. But this is the, there are base, there's, well, there are a bazillion ways you can connect up op amps. However, from a practical perspective, there are three main flavors. There is the buffer, which we just saw, valuable in its own right. There's the inverting and the non-inverting. Those are like your three main categories. We're going to do the non-inverting right now. We'll do the inverting in just a second. OK. And um, so let me just tidy this up. Let me just put generic resistors here instead of numbers. Uh, R1 or R2? What are you, what's your preference? R2? Yeah, OK. I'll just find I can live with that. OK, so this is ground. Uh, let's tidy up my op amp a little bit. OK, so let's see if we can figure out what this puppy does. Is this connected in a negative feedback configuration? Yes. Is there a connection between output and the negative input? Yes, there is. Yes, there is. There is a feedback pathway. The output does touch. The negative feedback, the negative note. Not directly, but that's cool. That's, that, that doesn't have to be directly. OK, so that's nice. Um, what's the relationship between those two pins? They're the same, which means that this voltage is 0? Vn. OK, thank you. That's Vn. Right? Because remember, as long as it's in, the, in a non-inverting feedback configuration, the two input voltages have to have the same value which means that if we set that as V in, then that's going to be V in. Now, let's see who was paying attention for the first half of today's lecture. Forget for a minute that I assigned this to V in. Could I express this voltage in another way? So, OK, so is there a current going through this resistor? OK, what's the value of that? Should I draw that, that current to the left or the right? Right, really? No, to the left. Oh, whatever. You can draw, I'm sorry. You can draw it any way you want. You'll get the same answer either way. OK, so, so do we have a situation where, so we have a situation where current's flowing in this direction. Is that right? And then where does all that current go? Once that current gets to this intersection, does it go north or south? All of it? Did any electrons go into the op amp? No. no. Otherwise, your op amp burns up. Yes. Yes, we've seen this, right? What do we call it when we have a voltage source and all the current goes through one resistor and then goes through another resistor? Do we have a name for that? It's a voltage divider, OK? Right? How is that any different than if I drew this? Any different? No. If you don't believe me, you're totally welcome to do it the other way. That's what's fun about this, right? If you don't believe me, you can say V out minus this node over R2 
equals this node over R1. Set the currents equal. But that's basically V out minus this node over R2 equals this node over R1. It's a voltage divider. So tell me. So questions about that? OK. So if I have, actually, I'm going to go draw that back. I'm sorry. So in my new voltage divider here, this value is equal to V out. It's weird to put V out at the input, but that's what's happening here, right? This, the op amp is driving the voltage on that node. OK, so that's your V out. You with? OK. What do I call this node? That node is this node. And that node, we already negotiated. V in. Fun. So now we can write the voltage divider equation. I'll start. V in equals R1 OK, we're almost there. Now, I, it turns out I happen to want to express V out as a function of V in, right? not the other way around. Like I want to say if my input value is 4 volts, my output value is this. But this is like the opposite. right? So instead of this, I want to write this as V out equals. V out and V in are the same? How? They were only the same in the previous one because of the way we configured it. But they're different. in here, they're definitely not the same. right? V out and V in can't be the same. So we've this is, hold, hold on. This is V in. This is V in. OK. The only way that V in and V out could be the same is if there was no voltage drop across this resistor. right? But as long as there's current flowing there, which there almost always will be, that's it. They're going to be. They're guaranteed to be different. So, is there a way to just differentiate V in between the top and the positive load, or that op amp V in on the positive load, the same as V out? I'm sorry, I don't understand the question. The top input to the to the op amp, that V in right there. Okay, let, let me let me let me denote something a little bit differently just to help us for notational purposes. I, let me say this. Let's say that the op amp has two inputs, V plus and V minus. I'm going to apply V in to the positive node, V plus. OK. Does that? So it is true that V plus and V minus, they're going to have the same voltage. But that doesn't tell you anything about V out. Right? That, for that, to, to, to understand V out, you need to look at the feedback loop. Right, and it's totally dependent on how you configure the circuit. OK, so we're almost there. How do I get V out now? Right, so that's going to, so I basically just take this and bring it over to the left hand side. So it'll be R1 plus R2 over R1 times V in. Or a little cleaner way of writing it is 1 plus. R2 over R1 times Vn, right? Because R1 over R1 is 1. OK? So what we're going to do, we're going to call this expression, we're going to call that the gain. Because I got some input voltage, and I applied a gain to it. I multiplied it. Let's try that. Let's actually do an example. Maybe this will help Mike with. Uh, with clarifying some of your, um... no, I was, I was thinking of the buffer. I'm sorry. okay, no, no, it's just cool. I mean, let's let's just try one anyway, right? So let's um, let's put four volt, four ohms, and two ohms. And I don't know what what input voltage should we should we supply? What's that? Ten volts. Sounds good. Okay. So if this is ten volts, this is ten volts. 
Okay, according to uh, Ohm's law, if this is 10 volts, what's the current flowing through that resistor? What's the voltage across that resistor? Don't make it harder than it needs to be. Five amps, right? Because it's the, 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 the resistor's got 10 volts on this side and zero volts on this side, so it's got 10 volts across it. It's a two ohm resistor. There are five amperes going that way, which means there's how many amperes going that way? Five amperes, right? Because where did all that five amps come from? Well, it had to come from here. Good. If there's five amps through a four ohm resistor, what's the voltage drop across that resistor? There's a 20 volt jump across that resistor. If this is 10 volts and there's a 20 volt jump, that means this is? 30 volts. Okay. Now, we predicted our gain would be 1 plus R2 over R1. So that's a total gain of, let's see, 4 over 2 is 2, plus 1 is 3. 3. Are we seeing a gain of 3? Yes. Took my 10 volt supply, tripled it, gain of 3. Pretty sweet, right? You know what's cool? What if you put a negative 10 volts here? Does it work for negative numbers? Totally. I mean, depending, making, provided you've wired your op amp properly. But absolutely, there's no reason this can't work for negative values. I just missed it. How you got, like, without that calculation, how did you arrive with the 30 volts? Okay. 10 volts? 10 volts. You okay with that? Because these have to be the same. If that's 10 volts, that means there's 10 volts across this resistor. It's a 2 ohm resistor. Mm -hmm. So V equals IR. That means it has to be 5 amperes coming from going across this resistor. If there's 5 amperes here, that same 5 amperes had to come across this resistor. That's the only way. We know current didn't come out of the, there's no current going in or out of that node. So all that 5 amperes had to come across that resistor. So it's a 5 5 amps through a 4 ohm resistor means a 20 volt drop across the resistor. So if you started with 10 and you had a 20 volt drop, that gave you a 30 here. Pretty nice, right? Now, um, okay, so good. So where did the 5 amperes come from? The op amp, right? The op amp is sitting here thinking, okay, the only way I can maintain equilibrium is if I put out enough current to get to 30 volts, okay? So it says, I mean, basically it's got like an internal mechanism that, that does all that, but the op amp basically figures out that if I need to hit steady state, I need to put out five amperes, okay? And provided it's got the internal circuitry to support that, it will give you five amperes. We good? Yes? Can you also set the, the voltage drop across the resistor equal to the, the four ohm we get V out? So do like zero minus 10 volts over two, Yeah, you'd just be sending the current back the other way. You mean like if you drew the arrows basically going up and over? Yeah, yeah, yeah you, but you'd still get 30 volts. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I mean, you'd get basically negative 5 amperes, negative 5 amperes. you just get a bunch of minus signs, but they would all cancel out. You'd still get 30 volts. There's only one, the only one right answer. Now, here's what makes op amps really nifty. So a moment ago, when we were talking about voltage dividers, we said that if I had a voltage divider, so just to recap, voltage divider. So I don't know, 6, 4, 2, what's this voltage? 2. Right, this is 2 volts. OK? Now, here's the deal with voltage dividers. If I now come and add a load to this. OK, I'm going to call this a, I'm going to give this a fancy name. So let's say the whole point of this voltage divider was to give me two volts here. For some reason, I felt it was important that this op amp, have, that this uh, configuration generate a two volt supply. Good, I generated a two volt supply. Now I want to do something with my two volt supply. I want to light a light bulb. So I plug in my light bulb. What happens to my two volt supply? 
Is it going to stay 2 volts? No, what did we learn? Is it going to go up or down? It's going to go down, right? Because I'm putting a resistor here. Some of the current that was going through, that was going to, going through here before is now going to go through here, and the net result is that that voltage is going to drop. Right? That was basically like the last lecture and a half. So although the voltage divider did a nice job of giving me 2 volts, if that's what I wanted, ultimately it sucked, because as soon as I attached something to my little setup, I lost my 2 volts. Okay, I lost my little power supply that I wanted. Now, by comparison, let's come over here and look at the op amp. Suppose I come and connect something to this configuration. All right, suppose I come and connect what we call a load. A load is anything. It could be a light, a motor, something that you want to drive. Okay, so let's say I'm going to add a load resistance of um, 10 ohms. What's going to happen now? So in other words, I want to know, am I going to lose my, is this 30 volts going to change? I know over here, it changed. I had 2 volts. As soon as I put a resistor next to it, I, I lost my 2 volts. It changed to some other value. And not only that, but the value that it changes to depends on how much load I put. Do I have the same problem over here? If I put a 10 ohm load there, what's going to happen? Right. So ideally, this is what will happen. The op amp will say, oh, oh, something just changed. I've got a load now. OK? I still want, I still will only feel natural if I have a 30 volt output. So I'm going to do everything in my power to maintain a 30 volt output. But now it seems that the only way to produce a 30 volt output, OK, is I've got to supply enough current to satisfy an IR drop across my load. So what's my, uh, how much current is my load going to draw? Somebody said it. Say it with authority, right? There's one equation. That's all we've had so far, right? V equals IR. What's the voltage across my load? 30 volts. What's the impedance of my load? 10 ohms. How much current is my load drawing? 3 amps. 3 amps going that way. What about my feedback mechanism in the op amp? How much is that drawing? Did that change? That's not changing, right? This is still 10. That's still 10. That's still 30. That's still drawing 5 amps. OK, so how much current is coming out of the op amp now? 8 amps. That's what's cool about. That's what, and so do I, keep my, do I keep my 30 volts? Absolutely. That's what's cool about having op amps in these configurations. Okay? They can automatically adjust their current output, right? They can automatically adjust their current output to account for whatever load you tack onto it. So here I put a 10 ohm load. I kept my 30 volts. What if I change it to a 5 ohm load? OK, change it to a 5 ohm load. If I change it to a 5 ohm load, how much current does the, does the load draw? Right, if I put a 5 ohm load, I draw 6 amps. OK, that's fine. 6 amps to the load, 5 amps to the feedback, 11 amps from the op amp. The whole point is that the op amp adjusts on the fly to give you just enough current that you need to keep everything tweaked. There are limitations, of course, right? I mean, op amp can't supply infinite current. Like, at some point, you will break it. But if you know what the design characteristics are, like if you know, you know, I promise I will never attach a load of more than this many ohms or less than this many ohms. And like, if you sort of have design specifications and you respect the design specs, uh, you can make something that will always work. So not only do you keep your 30 volts value here, regardless of the load, but it doesn't even, that's the thing, it's regardless of the load. It doesn't matter what the load is. Whereas if you compare it to something like what we had before, this is like the opposite. Not only does your 2 volts change when you attach a load, but the amount that the 2 volts changes by is dependent on the load amount. So this is not a very predictable way 
to drive, you know, to, to set a voltage to then use that voltage. Like if this was, you know, if you had a chip that needed a two volt supply, this would be an awful way to create a two volt supply. Because, you know, as, as your chip goes through its various functions, at one instant it might, need, it might draw some amount of current, and at another instant it might draw another amount of current, and as it draws different amounts of current, that voltage, you're not going to have two volts. You might have one and a half, one and three quarters, whatever. Whereas over here, you're done. You're good. So there you go. What do you think? Um, what if, um, OK, I think I'll stop with that example. Questions? So at the end of the day, you don't need to re-derive this every time you see it. It's like the voltage divider. You need to derive this approximately one time in your life. Okay. After that, you just remember, it's always the gain of 1 plus R2 over R1. Don't mess with it again. So this is always uh, connect, uh, uh, the voltage of the RPMs is connected to uh, any like, some sort of voltage source or current source. Yeah, you always, yeah, you have to connect some input to it. Right, the op amp always translates an input to an output. So you got to have an input and an output. So here's a question. Let's see. Uh, so if you do like a, a short circuit, uh, like would it affect uh, the current supply by the op amp? If I short circuited what? Like, for example, the resistance value. Like, if I short circuited this guy? Yeah. What would happen if I short circuited this guy? What's my gain? Zero. What is my gain? That's a great question. If I keep the same configuration, but I short this circuit, I short that resistor, what happens to my gain? One. OK? Two ways you can explain that. Here's the equation. What have I done to R2? If I short R2, I make it into a zero. OK, so 1 plus 0, 1. But intuitively, if that's V in, that's V in, which I then short to V out. So V in equals V out. That's a gain of 1. What if I, what if I short this resistor? What's my gain? Infinite? Sweet. We're going to win a Nobel Prize. I don't know if that easy. Right. Well, if you short this, you have problems. Because if you short this, this node is 0 volts. This node is 0 volts. But that node is 10 volts. But they're supposed to be a short, right? They're supposed to be the same voltage. So basically, what's going to happen is the op amp is going to try to drive an infinite amount of current in a futile attempt to raise this voltage to 10 volts while at the same time it's shorted the ground. So you know, that's a good way to destroy your, your equipment. So that actually wouldn't do anything. You can't actually get an infinite gain. All right, let's play a little game here for just a second to see like, who's paying attention. Um, Pick a value of R, find R such that V out equals 10 volts. Here's a nice quiz problem, the kind of low down dirty thing I would do on a quiz or exam. Give you a hint. 
There's one totally useless thing there that's just there to distract you. Don't call it out. Like work. I want you to work like, let's spend, um, we can budget like three minutes on talking to your neighbors and thinking about an answer. And then I'll tell you what I think the answer is. Yes. What's the question? Find value, find the value for resistor R that would make your output voltage 10 volts. I want this to be 10 volts. Yeah. What is this? Oh, this is nerd speak for such that. Loser. You have an answer? Hold on to it. <laughs> this is fun. Pretty cool, huh? I mean, it doesn't take much to make this a little confusing. Okay. What's the useless piece of information? The load. Right. Shouldn't matter what the, I mean, unless the load is some freakish out of bounds value, uh, we're going to assume that the op amp can, can source enough current to drive the load. All right. Um, so we can just pretend like that six wasn't there. That was just uh, there to distract you, and that is totally fair game. Yes? Right. Well, yeah, hold on, hold on. What, what gain do I need? Two. two. We all agree I need a gain of two. Because my input is five. I got to multiply that by some gain to get an output of 10. So the only way to do this is if gain equals 2, right? Because we've all learned like in kindergarten or whatever grade they teach that in now that if you take 5 and you times it by 2, you get 10. OK. Now, according to our formula, gain is equal to 1 plus R2 over R1. OK, well, 1 is 1. What's my value of R2? Sorry, what's my value of R1? My value of R1 is 4. OK, so in other words, I'm telling you that 2 plus, sorry, 2 equals 1 plus R2 over 4. So if I solve for R2, what am I going to get? R2 has to be 4. And here's what I gave you for R2. I gave you an 8 ohm resistor in parallel with some unknown resistor. So now I have to think about what value of R, what resistor do I stick down here such that that resistor in parallel with 8 has a parallel impedance of, of 4. In this case, it's easy, right? It's 8, because whenever you put two things that are the same value in parallel, you just half it. So it's 8. But if you forgot it, you could just say that it's 8, it's product over sum equals 4, and then you could bang your head against the table slowly while you try to solve for R. Um, it's actually not that bad, right? You'd get 8R equals 32 plus 4R, which means that 4R is 32, which means R is 8. Okay, so. I could put that on exams all day. Questions? All right, let's very briefly look at the other op amp, and then uh, we'll, uh, we'll call it a day. 
You're off until, uh, you don't have class on Monday because it's uh, some sort of federal holiday. Um, so you come back on Wednesday, and on labs are, lab starts on Wednesday, right, Elliot? Yes, it does. Okay, so later today we will be posting lab one. So Elliot, is there a pre lab? There is going to be a pre lab. Is it going to be on Blackboard? Yes, I will teach Elliot how to use Blackboard. Um, so basically, you're going to go online. You're going to you're going to access the lab. You're going to read the lab. There's going to be a problem that you have to have in your hands when you walk into lab. If you do that, you'll be good to go. <laughs> no, you shouldn't allow anyone in without the pre lab. That's my opinion. Okay. So here's the other flavor of op amp. Mathematically, this one's a little. A little easier to digest, I think. This is the inverting configuration. OK, it's different. Is it a negative feedback configuration? No. Yes. Yes. Is there feedback between the output and the, and the negative node, the inverting node? Yes. yes, the output is connected back through that node. So it does. We do get our rule about the virtual short. OK. So if this is, this is connected to ground, you with me? So if that's 0, this is also a virtual 0. Sweet. All right, now, current flows in this direction. Whatever, I'm just, it may flow the other direction, but I'm just going to draw it in that direction. So according to my arrow, how much is this current? Can I write an equation for I using Ohm's law? Right. It's the voltage across the resistor, which is V in minus zero, divided by the resistance. OK. So that current is V in minus zero divided by R1. Cool. So that current gets to the intersection and does what? Does up. Does any of it go in the op amp? Not unless your op amp is destroyed. OK. Um, good. So all your current goes through this resistor, which means this current I also has to equal that current I. Fun. OK, well, let's write Ohm's law for that resistor. Right? Consistent with my direction for the current, Ohm's law for R2 is 0 minus V out over R2. Okay? It's all, because I've drawn positive current in this direction, it's got to be like this. This voltage minus that voltage. So 0 minus V out. At this point, I don't even really care what the value of I is anymore. That's just, that was just there as a, like a crutch. I can solve for V out now, can't I? Look, look how easy. Like the zeros just disappear, and I'm left with V out equals minus R2 over R1 times V in. Done! Cool. So this is your gain. Your gain is negative. That's why it's called an inverting op amp. So for example, suppose um, Suppose we built this like so. What would be the value of V out? Right? It's going to equal my, uh, well, according to the formula, it's going to be minus R2 over R1 times V in, so minus 4 volts. <coughs> 
So that's an interesting philosophical question. Did my voltage get bigger? Can I call it a gain? I mean, it was positive, too. Now it's negative 4. Is it really a gain? It's totally a gain. It's a bigger voltage, right? It's further away from 0. It's a bigger voltage. OK, what just, I'm not going to derive it, just food for thought on your way out. What if I stick a big old resistor here? Or a little old resistor here? Is that going to change anything? Yeah. Right, if I put a 1 ohm resistor here, is that going to change my negative 4 volt output? Why? Nope, it's not going to change it. It's the same deal as before. If you put a load resistor here, the op amp says, I will only be happy if this node is at negative 4 volts. Therefore, I will do whatever it takes to have negative 4 amperes of current going through that resistor, which is basically the same as positive 4 amperes going up. So it will suck, four, uh, it will suck 4 amperes of current out of ground into the op amp in order to maintain peace, right? In order to maintain negative 4 volts there. That's how op amps work. They are resistant to the load. So it doesn't matter what load you slap on there, the op amp will vary how much current it needs to supply in order to maintain its desired output voltage. All right. I'll see you.